for today's story, I want to share with you a little funny thing uh, that happened in my apartment, in my very own home. And I'm going to first start off with a poem that was in my head when it happened. So when I get kind of scared or when I get kind of worried or I just don't feel my best, sometimes I go to poets to make me feel better. I always look to the words of others. So I was feeling a little nervous. I was feeling like I missed my friends uh, here at home. And something that kept popping up was this poem that I really love by Emily Dickinson. And the lines are, Hope is a thing with feathers that perches on the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. Hope is a thing with feathers. So I just kept saying that line over and over and it made me feel better a little bit. Hope is a thing with feathers because I love birds. I love birds so much. And being in New York City, it's the part of nature that I get to see every day no matter where I am. I pretty much always see a bird, even when I'm at home, just looking out my window. So I woke up one day and that line kind of just stuck with me. Hope is a thing with feathers. Hope is a thing with feathers. And I walked into my kitchen and I saw in my kitchen, not outside the window, a pigeon. It was just sitting on my kitchen floor, bobbing its head. And I noticed that my window was a little bit cracked open right at the top. And so I tried to get my pigeon friend back out the window, but he just like wouldn't fly out the window. And so I got worried because every time I got close by him to like kind of shoo him out the window, he kept, he was also feeling very anxious. Clearly he probably didn't want to be in my kitchen. Uh, with me bugging him around trying to get him to go somewhere. He didn't realize I wanted him to get him out the window So finally I grabbed a little towel and I managed hope the pigeon I named him temporarily he might have a different name, but for for this time I was calling him hope He got himself in a little corner and I was able to put the towel over him and wrap up him in the towel and hold him in my arms and carry him just outside put him right by a tree and then he kind of like took the towel off and hope the pigeon just kind of stayed there for a little while bobbed his head a little bit and I got worried that maybe he hurt himself while he was flying into a corner uh, so I just kind of stood there from a distance for a little while and eventually he saw the other pigeons in a tree and he flew away right into a tree and it was awesome and I felt myself very hopeful even though uh, you know the pigeon was afraid I still it was really warming my heart that I got to spend just a little bit of time with him when I was thinking about how I need a little bit of hope uh, for myself and so I thought that this might be a good project to share today this might be a good story to share today because I want to ask you all when have you cared for something in nature maybe it needed your care so this pigeon for example needed to go back outside and in order for him to be able to go back outside I, he needed a little bit of help so and he needed it by my hands so you probably have been being asked a lot to wash your hands by your parents and right now thinking about our hands is so important because that is how we are showing care to one another. We're washing our hands so we don't spread the germs that will get others sick. And we're also washing our hands so we ourselves don't get sick. We're washing our hands to show care to others. We're washing our, ha care we're washing our hands to show care for ourselves. We're just caring all around by washing our hands. So we're going to be thinking about other times that we have shown care using our hands and I wanted to do that by doing some finger painting because finger painting is the most basic beautiful art project because all you need are is your paint and your hands and if you don't have paint at home that's also okay because if you've ever made a 
hand turkey. That's kind of what we're doing. We're doing a hand turkey 2.0. So we're going to be thinking about a time that we showed nature, some part of nature, our care using our hands. Maybe you planted a tree or maybe you just touched the soil and you did it so lovingly and you thank the soil for its good work. Maybe you planted a tree. Maybe you pulled up a weed that was hurting another flower and put it somewhere else. What have you helped with your nature? What, how, how have you helped nature using your hands? So for exa my example, I took Hope the Pigeon, temporarily named by me, for my own selfish reasons. I took Hope the Pigeon and with my hands, I carried him to his actual home, which was not my apartment, but the whole New York City landscape. So I want you to think about a time that you have used your hands to care for nature. Once you've thought of what you have, how you have used your hands to care for nature, I want you to use your hands now and I want you to trace them onto a piece of paper or I want you to fill it with paint and then dip your hands on a piece of paper, in that paint and then onto another piece of paper. It might look something like this. So this is Hope the Pigeon, recreated using only my hands and paint. So you'll see, let's see, Oop. I did my hands just like this. I put these fingers kind of close together and these to make the wings. And then on this part here, I just wet this part again with paint, with my thumb, and I just put that on the paper. And so you might be recreating a different scene. Maybe, maybe you're thinking of a planting a flower. Maybe you've planted a flower. Maybe you'll use your hands each. There'll be little petals all around, or maybe it'll be a tree. So you can either paint your hands and dip it onto a piece of paper and cut it out. I put mine on a stick because I wanna see Hope the Pigeon flying around. You can recreate it on a piece of paper, or you can cut it out like this and find a stick maybe um, from just outside. You can use even toothpicks if you wanna make a really small one or whatever you have lying around to make a little puppet if you want your piece of nature to be in movement because the next part is to think more with our hands and put this in a scene. Welcome to my windowsill. So at this window is where I have been looking out and I have been seeing a ton of birds who have been keeping me hopeful, just like that poem, Hope is a Thing with Feathers. So also at this windowsill, you will see a whole collection of materials. One thing you will see is this tinfoil hand. And I created these to show you that you don't necessarily need paint. If you don't have paint at home, that's okay. You can create shapes um, from paper of all different kinds. Maybe it's not even paper. Maybe it's recycled from a magazine so it's nice and colorful. Whatever you have, you will be able to use. I am so sure of it because you are a deeply creative human being. And so I use tinfoil here. And I use tinfoil because I am trying to create a watery effect. So I used my hands and I'm thinking these little fingers will be tributaries, kind of like the Finger Lakes, the Finger Lakes of New York, but with my real fingers. Uh, and here you'll see that I cupped my hands just like this and I traced it just like that. So I want you to think about the different ways you can hold your hand. Maybe it's A-OK, -okay, maybe it's peace, or maybe this is the, um, the sign language uh, for love. And so, oh, this one here. And so we're going to be creating a little river from here, I'm thinking. So these two cupped hands together will be a water basin, little water basin. A water basin is a collection of water from a little body of water where water gathers um, and collects. And maybe here is where it kind of goes off into a river. 
a tributary, a tributary of a river is um, the little parts of the river that go off the main one. So maybe this is the main river and this is its own tributary. If I wanted, I could take extra tin foil and cut it from the, my finger and shape it around my finger and I could make the, bait, the river a little bit longer or connect. And so I'm just gonna be creating a scene here for my finger puppet to fly around, for Hope the Pigeon to fly around. You'll see I have my eggshells. This is from some eggs I made earlier today. I made scrambled egg. I made scramble eggs and it was delicious, but I thought I would keep the shells for some art. So I want you to think about as you're as you're living your lives at home, how can you save your materials and not just throw them away? How can you use them to make art? And this is some willow and some cattail that I've collected. And here is coffee grounds, but it looks like dirt. Maybe you actually just have dirt from an old plant or from a new plant and you can borrow some of its dirt. Or maybe you have dirt right outside. Here I have a piece of paper and some coffee grounds and a little tree from a, a branch from outside. I have some watercolor paper, paper that's been discarded from an older project I didn't want. And this is the scene to which Pope the Pigeon will fly around. So maybe Pope the Pigeon is by a nest. Maybe Pope the Pigeon wants to take a bird bath. Thank you so much for doing this art project with me. I'm really eager to see what you all create. So please hashtag maybe family art project. So hashtag family art project and tag Wave Hill. And I will look at all your beautiful work and I will do my best to comment and for us to be in dialogue so we can have some depth and distance. We can also hashtag that, hashtag depth and distance. Uh, and thank you again so much. Please take care of yourselves, of others, and of nature and show us how you are doing so in this art making. Bye.